Hello, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage here for Media Week NYSE Wired plus theCUBE here on the show floor of the New York Stock Exchange. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. Sam Seeley is here as the founder and CEO of NOC, the NOC app, uh, building you know, notification infrastructure technology to help developers be successful as the wave of gender AI is putting the pressure on the foundations of the infrastructure to be scalable, reliable, and obviously secure. Sam, great to see you, thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me, John. So we got lucky today, IPO's happening. When's your IPO coming on? You gonna ready to go? Not next year, <laughs> but hopefully soon <laughs> after, yeah. Um, I've been following your company, love what you guys do. Give a quick overview of what you guys are, stage of funding and, and product and your solution. Yeah, so we're a, a Series A company, we're based here in New York. Uh, we're NOC and we build notification infrastructure for developers and product teams. So uh, if you're a platform engineer tasked with building notifications for your product, uh, whether that's email, in-app, yeah. maybe Slack or Microsoft Teams, uh, we build the system that powers the orchestration across all those channels. We manage all the infrastructure scale, the real-time connections. Uh, and manage that system on behalf of engineering teams. Yeah, it's interesting right now, there's a lot of pressure with Gen of AI, certainly seeing some regulatory posturing guardrails, which is code word for, you know, slow it down when it's actually going really fast. Um, you know, you're seeing the open source models getting tons of traction, developers in a feeding frenzy, and that's going to put a lot of pressure on the infrastructure. And so you're seeing the platform engineering teams evolve very quickly to get that foundation set up while the data engineering is coming on too not just data science, but like, okay, how do developers deal with code, infrastructure as code, DevSecOps, we saw that movie, it's happening, continuing to mature fast, but now you got data as code. Yeah. And so developers are going to probably end up dealing with this too. So again, notifications, understanding what's real, this is going to be now part of developers in line to their workflows, probably in the CI CD pipeline. So like when you start thinking about a developer, this is going to put a wrench in the productivity gains if it's not solved. So you guys are in this area kind of helping developers, not necessarily with data, but like right now foundationally, the infrastructure is transforming at the same time as the data market. So you got back end and front end innovations yep. happening. And first time in my career seeing this movie. I mean, I've never seen this before where both the back end and the front end are exploding with innovation. So you got to do both. You can't just adopt a new stack and then say, hey, oh, by the way, we don't have the process. Yeah. I mean, it's all, it's crazy. What's your reaction to that? Yeah, I, I think I think that's exactly right. And one of the things that enabled services like Knock just over the last few years uh, was that, you know, it's not just back-end as a service, it's front-end as a service as well. And if you think about uh, the pace of innovation in the front-end over the last 20 years, it's kind of the Wild West, right? Yeah. Frameworks are constantly changing. Yeah. Uh, startups that I was at in 2015 that started using React in kind of its early years you know, you build the entire front end code base without hooks and suddenly hooks come out and everything changes. And so I think now that more and more of the front end is kind of coalesced around React and frameworks like Next.js, I think we're seeing a uh, component as the new kind of API, right? And so their front end experiences, you know, for us at NOC, that's notification feeds, it's banners, it's things like that, uh, that you know, previously, uh, you'd be building in your own front end and you'd be managing you know, all that state. And now it's as simple as dropping in a single React component and that component is wired up to our APIs and uh, everything is handled as full stack starting from the front end. So, so you guys make it easier then? Yeah. What's the, what was the motivation on starting the company? What was the origination uh, concept? When, when did you get the idea? What was the problem you saw? Yeah. And how does that evolve today? As they say, startups are kind of like a zigzag but the North Star has to still be in place. Take us through the thoughts there. Yeah, sure. So uh, my co-founder and I, we were on the product and engineering teams at a company called Frame.io, New York-based startup, now part of Adobe. And uh, Frame.io is a video collaboration tool. So if you're a professional in the video space, you're using Frame.io to review and comment on, on video. Um, and there are a lot of notifications that come out of a service like that. You're getting email notifications, in-app notifications, push, uh, notifications in their client apps. So um, we had seen what it was like up close scaling that system. And uh, it was not fun at you know, multiple points in the journey. The platform eng team had to you know, rebuild the system for new levels of scale. And on the product side, it felt like Here's this system driving all of our customer engagement, all of our retention, uh, but we don't have any visibility into it because it's all in back-end code. And so uh, we lived with that problem long enough 
And at the same time, we were seeing tools like Stripe for payments, Algolia yeah. for search, where they basically took these pieces of the SaaS stack and said, what if you put that behind third-party APIs? What if you put a best-in-class dashboard for managing that service on top of it? And uh, we just loved those products and looked at the pain that we were feeling on notifications and said, you know, there's something there's something here. So, so you guys were grinding it out and like, and what's going on? So you had kind of a blind spot. Mm -hmm. A lot of action was core of the app was happening. Yep. And plus the tsunami of notifications, which is like, think about walking through a hospital and all the bells are going off. It's like, what the hell's going on? So it was, so it was uncomfortable. Yeah. And difficult. And I think, uh, you know, with notifications, they don't exactly have like the best reputation over the last like 10 years, right? If you go up to the average uh, person on the internet and ask them, you know, for their least three favorite things that they're getting on their phone, oftentimes it's, it notifications comes up. And I think, you know, our view is uh, a lot of that is because teams, you know, getting notifications right takes a lot of time, right? Um, you have to build things like batching and digest engines, and those are often the things that get left uh, on the floor instead of into the final you know, production version of the app. So our belief is really that you, know, you get the best engineers in the world that want to work on distributed high volume messaging systems. That's us at NOC. And uh, we obsess over that problem and nothing else. And every other company gets to use us via our API and deliver a better experience. I mean, this is where the API model is going to be great and Gen AI is also going to make that better when you have abstraction around that from an integration standpoint. How, how has been the impact of developers? What's some of the feedback you've been getting around um, their life? Obviously, it makes it easier. Give us some examples. Yeah, sure. So, Amplitude is a customer of ours, uh, had built a system in-house, was staring down a you know, multi-year rebuild of that system, found Knock at the right time, and had finished the full rebuild on our platform in six weeks. So, I think, uh, we're talking about 10x level of improvement on initial build, but a cool thing about these systems is because notifications and notification platforming is all we do, we can afford to invest you know, serious product development in things that you often wouldn't find time to do in-house. So uh, for Amplitude, that means that they can introduce new notifications into the system or make updates to templates and have them live in a few minutes where it would take you know, a JIRA issue that takes a week or two weeks to yeah. get onto the backlog and gets, you know, actually finished. So uh, on an ongoing basis, there are a lot of time savings there as well. And then one of the cool things that we've seen is, you know, when you have an in-house system here, inevitably you have an enterprise customer and email doesn't get through their firewall or something's happening where they're reaching out with a support ticket. And at Frame, those would inevitably come back to engineering. Yeah. If it's a big enough customer, we have to put down what we're doing. You know, with Knock, we often see support and operations teams uh, that are in our product and you know, looking through the logs, looking through messages to help debug things for customers. I mean, the alternative is you know engineering time because it's not it's not trivial to work these problems. Um, but the key thing that I like what you're saying is is that as it gets into the product, so this is again ties back to your Frame and background there. So you guys live the problem. Ultimately, the product roadmap is impacted. Yeah. And engineering time as well. So it's like, you got, okay, take the engineers from doing what they're doing to go basically put out a fire, follow up on a tactical item, yeah. which is important because yeah. it's customer notifications, but also make the notification a product benefit. Yeah. Give an example where that's happening. Yeah, so uh, one of our customers uh, at App, who's part of Safety Culture, they're based in Australia. Uh, they are one of the world's largest learning platforms. So they're helping frontline workers and uh, manufacturing plants uh, learn how to do their jobs when they first get on site. And uh, there are back office employees at those places as well. And they built their entire notification system with NOC and saw course completion rates you know, double once they yeah. shipped notifications through our products. So I think it's often, I think everyone in a product team that's prioritizing things on the roadmap, knows that there are benefits with notifications if they do them right, they know they drive engagement and retention, but I think everything is through the lens of cost-benefit analysis when you're trying to figure out what you want to build next. And you talked about Gen AI earlier. I think this is probably the best time ever for how can I shrink the cost side of that equation, right? 
and uh, Gen AI and you know, IDEs is a big part of that, right? It's yeah. like never been easier to write code. Um, but like writing code is only one part of actually delivering something to production. There's also uh, platforming and all the infrastructure that goes behind the code that you're deploying to prod. And we think that uh, these full stack you know, API services such as Knock are another big part of this wave of developer productivity. It's interesting, it was like a Venn diagram, the overlap between front and back end where engineering takes things and where the product is a feature that could be a benefit or an, uh, an inhibitor yeah. is an issue. And so what are some of the things that you guys are doing? Because again, this idea that you guys obsess about it fully and deeply in a meaningful way. It's like, okay, that's cool. What things do you guys do that say someone might be indifferent on taking on? I can see, oh yeah, I could work on that, but that's going to take you know, eight weeks, uh, my time, you know, I'll pass. I mean, I mean I'm, I'm oversimplifying, but that could be the, the sentiment. I mean, the sentiment is if it's a hassle, yeah. you know, they, it might be overlooked. I mean, that's the risk of having these systems that get feature creeped into not enough staff, what, what gives some examples of where you guys are leaning in, going deeper in the notification area, and where does new tech like Gen A fit in? Yeah, and I, I think first that feature creep can, can often happen in notifications where the benefit is longer term, it can be harder to see versus the thing that a customer might be asking for for a deal in the next couple months. Um, but like a great example of that is notification preferences, right? Uh, there aren't that many products that do preferences in a really delightful way that are thinking about, you know, especially for B2B applications, uh, is this a notification that this person should be getting at 10 p.m. on a Saturday, yeah. right? And when you're building cross-channel notifications, the, uh, the default kind of thing that you'll often ship is no preferences at all, or at minimum some opt-outs, but very few teams are getting to a point yeah. of do not disturb and, and things like that. Whereas with Knock, that's part of the preferences API model that we serve to our customers is being able to programmatically define, maybe it's for all your users, uh, maybe it's for users that opt in, um, hey, only notify me in these windows. Maybe it's Monday through Friday, nine to six, or yeah. you know, whatever it might be. I mean, one of the things I love about this Gen AI wave, outside of the hype, which is always fun, having a media business always hyping up things, yeah. but there's real operational benefits and user experience benefits, and one of the things that jumps out at me and I see that people who are successful say, can, can provide hyper-personalization and customization on integrations. Yeah. Huge benefit. What's your vision on, as we look at the future, Integrations are going to be big because we're all API based. 85% of the internet's API connected, so okay, yep. APIs have happened. Yep. But now abstraction layers are opportunities to do personalization, preference setting, customization. Talk about the personalization and customization around that. What's your vision? Yeah, sure. So I think you know before knock, an engineering team would be making a direct API calls to the platform players that are great at last mile message delivery. So you know, 10 years ago, the hard part of email was how do I reliably get it to your inbox? And some great companies came along and, and solved that problem. Um, then the problem moves up to the next layer of abstraction, right? It's suddenly when uh, perfect, close to perfect, deliverability is an API call away across yeah. all these different channels. Now how do you create orchestration across that that creates a great experience yeah. for the end user? So I think for Knock, our integration strategy is any channel where you might want to message a customer, whether it's B2B and you're looking to message customers on Slack or Microsoft Teams or B2C and WhatsApp is an important channel for you. Uh, we invest heavily in making those integrations as turnkey as possible, yeah. both on the back end, but also on the front end. So Slack is a good example of, if you're a engineering team looking to build Slack into your product, you have to build the OAuth handshake with them. You have to figure out where am I mapping my channel model in yeah. Slack's channel model. And we've actually built a front end component library that again, similar to our feed, you drop in and you know, weeks of work, if not months of work, are available just in uh, a single component that you can drop in in a few minutes. Pretty what cool. advice would you have for folks out there? You mentioned components again, so that was a key area. Um, what's the state of the art from a development standpoint right now that you guys are energized around? One that you guys feels great, um, trends there, and then what, what, what your engineering teams are, are saying, hey, we should be doing more of this, and what customers are asking. What's the, 
What's the state of the art? You mentioned React, components, some key drivers. What are, the, what's, what are some of the key things driver things? I think the thing that we're obsessed about at Knock is for all of these third-party you know, platform services such as us, uh, like the best ones that we see, and, and this is something we strive for, are things that feel like tools that you built in-house, only you didn't have to, right? Yeah. So uh, they can be managed in code or managed you know, via our dashboard interface. Uh, you have uh, typing controls, so you know, schema validation on any of the API requests you're making to that service. And uh, they have CLIs that you can interface with them and pull them into CI CD. So a lot of our biggest customers even though they're running their notification infrastructure on us, they are uh, managing commits and deploys to our service from their CI CD. So um, that's the thing that we're kind of obsessing over and there's some yeah. other cool companies out there that are, are doing similar. Things. You know, Sam, I was at, um, last week I was at a security conference at Google Cloud and bought a company called Mandiant. They do threat detection. You know, they're hardcore defense. You know, I mean, yeah. the, the national security track and ransomware gangs to, you know, enterprise security. An interesting thing came up, and I want to get your reaction and thoughts on this, is that uh, one of the comments made by Kevin Mandy, the founder, was, you know, Gen AI is ultimately an application security problem. I mean, we've seen that movie before. What's your view as you look at Gen AI, it's clearly on everyone's radar, there's operational efficiencies, and there's obviously the user experience, again, both sides of the equation are, are innovative. Um, AppSec reviews are common. <laughs> I'm sure you guys have a lot of integration, you know, things you do. How do you look at Gen AI from an app perspective? Um, and how do you guys think about, how do you guys think about that? And yeah. how should the industry look at that? To me, it's, app, app, it's an application security problem. Yeah, I, I think for us, you know, where we sit in the application layer, uh, the way we're thinking about Gen AI is what can it do for optimizing like messaging experience for customers, right? And today, like Knock at its core is a workflow engine. You're, triggering workflows, you're telling us where those workflows should send messages. But one of the things that we're most excited about is where can you use Gen AI to personalize messages? So that might be things like over the course of a week for everything that you're sending us, what's the most valuable yeah. digest of information we can send you on a Friday afternoon? Yeah. Uh, and then the other thing is you know, Gen AI to power uh, intelligent recommendation of you know, sending those messages in the first place. So. Uh, what we're excited about is a future where you don't even have to program workflows into our system because we know the inputs that you're giving us and the outputs yeah. that you're trying to drive for customers and yeah. we take care of the rest. Yeah, this is a really a key, this goes beyond managed service, this is your part of the application. That's one of the key benefits. All right, talk about the, uh, the company. You got Series A, Series B on the table. You guys got product market fit. What's the, uh, give us the status of the business plan, how things are going. Yeah, things are going really well. We closed the Series A uh, late last year. So Congratulations. Series B on the horizon, but right now we're just focused on growth and, and yeah. customers. Yeah, startups are hard. You're at a, you're at a good point now and the market's hot. Um, give a plug for the company. What are you guys looking to do? Who are you looking to hire? What areas are you growing in? What to give, give, talk to the audience, give them a plug. Yeah, sure, so uh, we're knock. If you're building notifications, uh, you should come talk to us. <laughs> and uh, we're doing more than just transactional. So we're starting to expand into more in-app messaging use cases. Yeah. And uh, if, if that's on anyone's roadmap, yeah. we'd love to talk to you. I mean, end-to-end -end workflows are out there now. They're going to get Gen AI upgraded. Notifications will be part of that. Again, good, good position for you. Talk about the um, New York scene. I grew up in New Jersey, moved to California um, 25 years ago. And uh, I got to New York a lot. Obviously, a lot more now with theCUBE. You know, now more than ever I hear, even on the streets, because everyone's talking with their phones and the headsets on, um, people talking tech. Oh, yeah. I mean, the tech scene here is exploding. Share, share your, your thoughts on what's going on in New York. I mean, you've got great meetups. Um, you go back to even 10 years ago, you, it was like, okay, only certain circles were talking tech. Now you have a boom, boom market here in New York. What's the tech scene like here uh, in the Big Apple? It's changed a lot. I moved out here from the Bay in 2015 and you know you go to a house party and you're out of 10 people you're the one tech guy uh, and big trade just happened did you hear uh, it nice um, and you know fast forward to 2024 and things have changed a lot you've had some you know, big companies come out of new york like frame io ramp uh flat iron so uh you know it's a super exciting time to be in, in the scene and there's some great uh, tech and infrastructure, communities and meetups, Infra NYC, 
uh, is one that Megan Reynolds runs yeah. that uh, that I know you know of, and uh, it feels like for a while that you could be in New York and there were no distractions, and now there are some <laughs> distractions, yeah. just like in San Francisco. You're a celebrity. So. I mean, and this is I mean, entrepreneurs are, in my opinion, celebrities I mean, in the sense that it's hard to do a startup. I mean, you know, hard. I mean, talk about your journey. I mean, uh, it's. It's not for the faint of heart. It sounds easy on paper, but it's really difficult, certainly to nail Series A. What, take us through your thoughts on, on the folks watching who want to be entrepreneurs and start a company. Everyone wants to be a founder and go for the brass ring. Yeah, um, I'd say go for it. I think, uh, you know, I always knew if I could find the right idea, I wanted to start a company. Yeah. Um, but uh, it wasn't like a, you know, start a company or die type of thing, right? I wanted to make sure I found the right idea. And you know, once you go all in and you give notice at your job, uh, everything changes. And if you're out there thinking about an idea and you feel conviction in it, uh, just go for it because uh, it gets so much easier once you have you know, all of your time to, to spend on it. Um, but it's constant up and ups and downs and I think uh, if there's one thing I did right from day one, it was I found the right person to start it with. So Chris Bell, my co-founder, uh, we were close friends. We worked in the trenches together yeah, at, yeah. at Frame.io before this. Yeah. And uh, it, it's a huge blessing to, yeah. from day one, just feel like complete Yeah, I mean, you guys got a great problem started. you solve. And then also, obviously it's on a great market wave right now because you know notifications is critical infrastructure for apps. And obviously, the closed loop nature of coming into the product roadmap, plus the ease of use, I mean, it's a multitude of benefits. Yeah, awesome. Uh, across the organization, too, engineering All right. products. Well, thanks so. for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate you, and uh, we'll, we'll keep in touch. Yeah, thanks for having me, John. Okay, this is theCUBE. We are here on the floor of New York Stock Exchange. I'm John Furrier, the host of theCUBE here in our NYSE new East Coast location. Thanks for watching. <laughs>